Hello everyone, friends of Sticker Travel all over the world. Nestor here from Buenos Aires, Argentina. In this occasion, I will introduce you to the Argentinian cuisine. Okay, how uh, people here feel the food, how the ceremonies are here in the food. Okay, the different heritage from all the communities that have lived all over the region of what today is Argentina, okay? So you will see asado, you will see empanadas, you will see pastry, pizza, a lot of things, okay? So come with me, hope you enjoy our ride, our walk. So come with me, let's go, thanks. Well, one of the favorite meals of the Argentinians, of the people here in Buenos Aires, this is the pizza. Okay, um, to talk about pizza, I bring you to the main downtown. This is the intersection between Corrientes Avenue and Night July Avenue. The Corrientes Avenue, this is the place where most of the best pizzerias, pizza restaurants are located in this spot of the city. This is the intersection between Avenida Corrientes, Corrientes Avenue, and 9 July Avenue, okay? I will show you them right now. The pizzerias arrived for the first time at the end of the 19th century with the immigration of Italians that settled in the neighborhood of La Boca, in the southern part of the city. Most of them were from the city of Genoa in Italy. And they brought a meal that was very famous there, that was the pizza, okay? The first pizzeria settled in the neighborhood of La Boca. Anyway, this intersection where Corrientes Avenue is in the main downtown, this is the place where most of the pizzeria settled on this place. As I mentioned, this is the main downtown. And Corrientes Avenue is considered as a place where the city that never sleeps, this is a street that never sleeps because of the nightlife of the theaters, the presence of theaters, of the book stores, and also a lot of pizzerias, as I mentioned before. Okay, this is the main downtown, this is the 9 July Avenue, that is the one where the buses are. This is the widest avenue in all over the world. Well, this is the second one because the first one, this is in Brazil. But this avenue is 140 meters wide, okay? So this is considered one of the most famous in Buenos Aires that connects the southern part with the northern part. And then I will show you the main postcard of Buenos Aires. Yes, intersection 9 July Avenue with Corrientes Avenue. 9 July, this is the date of our independence, 9 July of 1816. And this is the main postcard of Buenos Aires, and this is the Obelisco, okay? The famous Obelisk. Thousands of people come every day to work. Here are located a lot of offices of this spot. So, Three lines of metro, for example, vans that take people to different parts of out, uh, out the other part of Buenos Aires city and the places out of the city by the metropolitan part. The obelisk, what it represents, this is uh, an Egyptian monument. Yes, the history of the obelisk is uh, the Mecano the Egyptian monument, but uh, it doesn't have a, a relation with the history of Argentina. The thing is that the city wants to have a special moment, monument for the commemoration of the 400 years of the foundation of Buenos Aires. Okay, that was the first settlement in 15. 36 when the Spanish conquerors arrived for the first time. This was not the first. The, the formal foundation that was in the Maya Square, you will see in another video, 15.8. Okay? You can see that there are a lot of cars, a lot of buses. Uh, it's uh, almost impossible to, to avoid the noise right here, okay? And then you will see a sign, a self 
La voy a bloquear, lo que dice es PA, ¿ok? Buenos Aires. Tal sencillo, un flash. And there are a lot of people doing their thing, ¿ok? Well, as I mentioned before, eh, bueno, Corriente Avenue has also a lot of bookstores. Yes, this is one of the hundreds of, well, not hundreds, but dozens of um, bookstores that are here. On November each year, this is the uh, night of the bookstores where all of them are open, but usually they are open until three in the morning, four in the morning. So they, uh, on that night, they offer a lot of bargains. Uh, sometimes there are uh, some conference of some writers. So this is very nice. There is a, a, a very big amount of, of books. You can see different prices. Okay, and now I will recommend one of them. You can find it in each language, in every language, more than 80, that is Mafalda. Okay, this is our most known character in the comics all over the world, made by Kino. Okay, so well, let's go on, let's go to the pizzeria. Well, as I mentioned before, uh, this is the Corrientes Avenue. You can see the obelisco there. And now I will show you two of the of the most important theaters on the Avenida Corrientes. This is the Gran Rex. Yes, this is very common for the people. People here in Buenos Aires like, like a lot coming to the theaters during Saturday, during weekends. Yes, this is the other one, opera, they offer drama, comedy, shows of music, for example, local artists have, yes, and then it's a tradition also to stop then uh, at any bookshop or maybe take a pizza. This is very common to go to any pizzeria located in Buenos Aires after going to the theater, after buying the book, this is very nice the people. I will show you one of the pizzerias inside. Well, this pizzeria is one of the most famous ones in Buenos Aires City. This is the Cuarteta chosen by a lot of people. Okay, this is some matter from the, 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 the Corriente Avenue. Okay, I will show you inside. This. Okay, well, first of all, I can mention that there are different pizzerias. Every pizzeria in Buenos Aires has its own maestro pizzero, pizza master. Okay, so an specialist guy in the art of the pizza. Yes, the pizza was brought, as I mentioned before, by the Italian immigrant from the port of Genova that right to La Boca, the, the pizza of Italy that is even uh, smaller than the one in Buenos Aires. Buenos Aires has transformed the pizza. For example, the pizza in Italy uh, is very thin, the mass, okay? And not so much cheese. The pizza in Buenos Aires, for example, has a very, have a very thick mass, okay? Very spongy, they are very spongy, they are very tasty, and the idea of the cheese with mozzarella, mozzarella has to be uh, overspread the pizza, okay? That must be like this. So, I will show you a picture of this anyway. But I can show you now this is the pizza, okay? These are the, the guys from the pizza. The, the most traditional one is to ask for a big one of mozzarella, okay? The big one of mozzarella, the, the mass half three centimeters of thick, okay? I will show you one. This is the kind of pizza that is the huaceta, okay? It has only one of the varieties of the pizza, okay? 
Tapi tentang ini juga sing dari ise, soalnya soalnya di ise ini loh, dia main loh sixty, okay, itu lagi kan loh sixty five, ya, dari dari old loh, kita kan over year ni, abis ya, okay, year old. ご視聴ありがとうございました the sign, okay, so the characteristics here for the pizza are to the must have to be thick or thicker it is the three centimeters thick and then with the cheese spread, okay, we will see the big one, the mozzarella special mozzarella pizza in this house very interesting Yeah, and then the fourth step from Buenos Aires to the world. Yeah, muchas gracias. Muy amable. Chao. Well, now we go out from the guardia of the Hungary pizzeria, and we go on. Well, people, I could not stop my temptation. My temptation and I had to buy two pieces of pizza. Yeah, you can see the cheese. Very greasy, huh? Yeah? Spreading off the piece. There are two pieces, okay? You can find it with another style of pizza, the ones of the Napolitana, the piece of, of, of tomato. You can find also the Calabresa with a bit of salami, Ugazeta with uh, ham, you know, these are interesting pieces of, of pizza, but the most traditional one, as I mentioned, this is one, that is the mozzarella pizza. Well, now I am in the neighborhood of San Telmo, very famous for its fair and then for the antique stores and then for the market of San Telmo, okay? Inside here, there is a special spot, as you can see, where I will introduce you to one of our most famous desserts, our most famous products, one that is very typical here and that Maybe it was discovered, discovered, yes, by chance, yes. One of the theories says that it was brought, brought by uh, Jose San Martin, our liberator, but uh, the most common history, the most common story says that one of the most important characters of the Argentinian history, that is the one on the right, I will show you that is, Juan Manuel de Rosa, who was the governor of Buenos Aires. If you want to know more about him, I suggest you to watch the video of Palermo that I made, yes, on the house of Juan Manuel de Rosa. Yes, uh, he had a meeting with one of his enemies, and the lady that was working for him was cooking uh, a dessert that was uh, only milk with sugar. Well, this uh, product overboiled in the fire and that it began to be like a mass, yes, turning into a color brown. As you can see this one, yes, this is one of the typical nowadays we cannot taste now because uh, this is uh, not uh, a lot because of the of the pandemic of course, but this is the <coughs> product Yes, you can see the brown color of this. This is uh, only milk with sugar, 
the same receipt as a marmalade yes instead of any fruit instead of any fruit instead of grape or yes this is only milk milk with sugar you have to cook it during more than one hour and then you, the color turn brown where it's used for everything yes we eat it a lot this is very eaten all over Argentina and Uruguay yes anyway this is also known all over Latin America yes it has different names depending on the region for example this is called Arequipe in Venezuela Colombia and then in different parts of Latin America for example in Mexico this is called Cajeta this is not a, a very good name for Argentina but uh, <laughs> because of the change of the meaning but yes the, this is the this is the product that was mostly adopted by Argentina and Uruguay for a lot of desserts okay and then for example the most important dessert made with the dulce de leche or milk jam I can say this is the alfajor I will show you a picture of the alfajor you can see yeah this is a cookie yes these are two pieces of cookies these two cookies yes made with flour that inside has dulce de leche yes this is uh, has over a uh, chocolate okay and then taken to the oven and then this is a typical dessert but the origin of the alfajor comes from the south of Spain, the first alfajor, that was a totally different dessert than the one we know now used to be uh, like a kind of cup of something that was like a cookie that was dropped by the Arab to the south of Spain and was adopted there but this is the only simi similitude there eh? are the two cups with uh, something sweet inside the one here is totally different yes all the words that uh, start with al, yes, it means that the origin is Arab, okay, that is why al fahor this is the, the only name. And it depends on the region where we are, uh, we ask for al -Fahores. If we are, have relatives that go to the Atlantic coast of Argentina, we ask for alfajores because the alfajores there are different than the ones in Buenos Aires. If you go to Patagonia, for example, you can have alfajores with, filled with uh, some uh, wood or forest fruits, okay, like grapes, for example, strawberries, different things. If you go to the center of the country, it can be different. If you go to the north of the country, it can be different. It depends on the region, okay? Some of them show the different regions, okay? These are the ones that you can see. Some another receipts, yes, this, this can be different, but this is very tasty, the dulce de leche. You, you need a little bit of water after that, okay? Anyway, I will show more things with uh, made with the uh, dulce de leche. This is one of the most important markets that offer dulce de leche in the neighborhood of San Telmo. We are in the, in the San Telmo neighborhood. Before going, my friend Flavia here will give me a piece of dulce de leche. You can see the consistency of this, yeah? The brown color much to thank you very much to our friends of La Vaca Lechera in San Telmo neighborhood. Thank you. Tu nombre? Flavia. Flavia. Thank you very much, Flavia. Muchas gracias, Flavia. Nos vemos. Well, something that is very typical here in Buenos Aires. This is the coffee. Okay, there are coffee stores everywhere, restaurants, and then bars that offer coffee. People in Buenos Aires like meeting among friends uh, to talk about everything, to talk about football, to talk about politics, to talk about tango, to talk about love, whatever. So 
uh, these places are very typical. And then there are 82 bars that are protected by law. These are notable bars that are called. Okay, it has they, these places have a importance to the culture in, in Buenos Aires, okay, architectonically, or maybe some historic facts that happen. Okay, that is a a typical breakfast that is very common for the people that are in hurry, that is the coffee with milk and then with the company of three half a moon. Half a moon, this is media luna, okay, media luna is the translation, and come from the French, that is the croissant. Croissant, this is the translation for the shape of the moon, okay, despite of having a French name, it has uh, its name comes from uh, an Austrian uh, event that happened against a war with the uh, Ottoman Empire. So uh, there was a participation by the baker of Vienna then that participated there. And then the bakers uh, made like a, like a joke, laughing at the Ottoman Empire, making uh, these croissants that represented uh, the moon of the music. Okay, so I'm receiving my. Gracias. I'm receiving my coffee with my croissants. Uh, also happened in another in our culture. This is why I mentioned this uh, kind of joke because here also happened this uh, tradition of the baker of uh, making fun of the uh, and in, in, in the name of the of, of the pastry here in Argentina in Buenos Aires happened with the bakers that arrived. Yes, I will show you our case with our pasty, okay, which kind of names were given and then with the context, okay? See you. Well, in the case of Argentina, a lot of immigrants that arrived from Italy were anarchists and a lot of them were bakers and open bakeries on these places, okay? And so they began to name uh, the, this pastry, the pastry that began to be very traditional in Argentina as facturas. Facturas, the translation for facturas, this is invoice, okay? One, the one do we write after being paid, yes, this one. And they began to give to give funny names in order to laugh at the institutions. For example, the Sacramento for making fun of the church, the Friar Ball, yes, this is a funny name, the Cañoncito in order to make fun of the army with and then the Vigilante, this is the cop, the meaning. And then this is, for the Spanish speakers, this is very typical, this is a churro. This is just a uh, flour wheat, yes, boiled with a little, bit, a little bit of salt. This is eaten everywhere in Latin America and Spain. In the case of Argentina, we have dulce de leche inside. The same we do with the fryer bowl and the cañoncito, it has dulce de leche inside, as you can see. And the best company for this, this is our classic mate, the classic beverage. Yes, this is a heritage from the Guaranias communities that lived in the, uh, in the northeast of Argentina, Paraguay, part of Uruguay, part of Brazil, yes. Which origin? Uh, origin. This is uh, this this herb that you will get the explanation on the video of Palermo. Okay, but well, this is an introduction for our local pastry that is very traditional for meetings among people to drink mate. Yes, very social. And well, my friends. Now I will show you one of the favorite meals in the Argentinian 
cuisine. This is the Milanesa, a product that was brought by the Italian immigrants at the end of the 19th century, beginning of the 20th century, when the whole immigration from Italy came. Okay, so uh, there was a popular meal brought from Milan. This is the Milan, the, the meaning of Milanese, Milanesa. Uh, the one of Milan, okay. This origin, the origin of this meal comes from the uh, the, the Italians say that this is Italian. The Austrians say that this is an Austrian meal. Anyway, uh, the thing is that this is kind of cotoletta. Cotoletta is the name given in Italy. This is the the kind of uh, slice of meat. Okay, I will show you this one. Yes, this shape. This has a breaded meat, breaded meat with uh, some bread. Okay, uh, I will explain you how to prepare this meal. Okay, this is very typical here because this is like a voyage, like a ride to your childhood. Okay, you remember your grandma, your grandpa, your parents. Okay, that. Uh, this is the most usual to remember. Uh, this is very familiar, very close to our families. And then the first, the, the things about the ingredients that we need for doing the milanesa. This is uh, one kilo, approximately, of this kind of beef. Yes, meat. Argentinians here we eat a lot of meat. Yes, a lot of kilos of meat during the the year. Uh, and other things that you need in addition to these uh, pieces of meat. Uh, this is the what you need also. This is the, the ingredients. Okay, you need eggs. That is important. Sorry, one minute. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, you need the garlic. Okay, pieces of garlic. It must be, it must be a club, a garlic club. Uh, okay, into small pieces, then a bunch of a bunch of uh, this parsley. Okay, the parsley also must be uh, smashed. Okay, and then you mix it. This is the Provencal. Okay, and then three eggs. Okay, you can see eggs, three eggs. Okay, you can see it there. Okay. Then you have to put it together, yes? Only one piece of garlic, only one piece. And then you mix, you mix it all with salt. And then pepper, some pepper, okay? You have some pepper in preparation. Not too much, as you wish. You mix it all. And once you mix it, you put these pieces of meat. You put them all. Okay. You need to put them all. Yeah. Then you mix it. And you wait about two hours. And then I will show you what comes next. Okay. This is the time of the uh, bread, how the bread comes here, okay? So, see you in two hours. Well, we come two hours later, I will show you the second part of this. Well, you can see this, yes? This is the preparation, this is complete. I will show you better, yes? Okay, with the parsley, with the garlic, with the eggs. The pieces of meat are wet, and then and they are full of these things. Uh, on this here, you can see the bread. Okay, that is good. As you can see, the bread crumbs. Yes, if it can be seen. Yes, this is bread crumbs. And then, what is the idea of this? Putting this each piece of meat. Yes, on the bread, like this.
and then you have to cover this. Yes, I will show you better in another way. This is what you should do to know. Okay. What we should do is this. Okay. Have to cover this thing. This is what you have to do. Okay. To wet it. And then you do this times until it's full of this. And then you do it with each piece of meat until you have all of the pieces like this. Okay? It must look like this. Not to not to see the the red part of the of the meat, okay, the idea is to be full of the red crumbs, okay? And you do it again and again and again with all the pieces of meat and then you leave it until they are ready and then this is the next step that is the last one that it's uh, frying them into the oil okay into the boiling oil okay and I will show you the the, the result it might be uh, fried during uh, more than 10 minutes, eh? 5 minutes one side, uh, 5 another minutes on the other side, and then I will show you now the result of this, how it's the, 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 the result of all of, of this Milanesa, okay? Well look, this is the Milanesa already cooked, yes? Uh, some people do it in the oven, yes? But this is fried, okay? Uh, this uh, the ideal company can be uh, French fries, uh, smashed potato. That is the case I made. Yes, uh, or a salad. Yes, that is good option too. Uh, but imagine the that the Milanesa gets burnt. Uh, what would you do in that uh, situation? Yes, uh, would you throw it away? That this is not the best option, I think. Would you eat it anyway? Or maybe would you try to do your magic? Uh, well, in a restaurant located in Buenos Aires called Napoli, the cook got a Milanesa burnt. Uh, it was the last one in the kitchen, so it was the time to close the restaurant. So there was no chance to do a lot. Uh, so the cook decided to put on the on the milanesa ham, tomato sauce and cheese as a pizza. Yes, the result was so good and tasty that the meal was included in the in the menu. That it was wonderful. Uh, as the restaurant was named Napoli, the new meal was named Napolitan Milanesa, Milanesa a la Napolitana. Yes, this restaurant was located in the Buenos Aires downtown. Yes, uh, and this is a very, very famous meal nowadays, very chosen by the people. Yes, this is a very good option for the Milanesa that you can see that is uh, with a piece of lemon. This is ideal, the lemon, as a company for the meal. Yes, hope you have liked this meal I share with you. Yes, so I will the Milanesa. <laughs> so my friends, hope you have enjoyed our experience on the Argentinian cuisine today. Hope you have enjoyed all the empanadas, the pizzeria, dulce de leche, the asado, that is not only made in the restaurant, this is also made, the main um, spirit of the asado is making this also in the houses, okay? Uh, the preparation, this is a ritual for the Argentinians, for meetings, for celebrations of New Year's, birthdays, days of mother, of father, 
the, for meeting among friends, among families. So the whole ceremony of the asado is very interesting. Uh, the meanwhile, while preparing, uh, people checking to get the best, uh, the, 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 the charcoal, the best charcoal to be, to be burnt, okay? So for playing cards after the asado, for taking a coffee among friends. So well, uh, hope to see you again another video. Uh, uh, thank you from my part and the part of Stika Travel also. So hope to see you again very soon. And I invite you to Argentina to come very soon to enjoy uh, this beautiful country also. Whenever you can, whenever you want, you are invited to come to Argentina. So, bye.